Hello! As the creator of Trail Seeker, I figured some people could use a visual reference for how the game is played. Every card game is complicated, they just feel easy once you've got it figured out. Poker is a good example. Let's get started. Trail Seeker is designed for 2 to 8 players, functioning best with a nice set of 4. That's because the game features 4 playable characters. This can be a bit confusing because each character plays the game a different way. Despite the differences, each character will invariably build up their own type of trail. A trail, much like in the game Solitaire, is a designated set of cards built up from a foundation from low to high or high to low. In Trail Seeker, you don't need to consider what suit the card is, just the color. I'll explain more when we start the example. Going back to the four court leaders, let's look at what their objectives are and how they differ. Starting with the simplest character, the Wildeback. The Wildeback's goal is to travel the face of the world by making a full black card trail. The Wildeback loses the game if it is slain by the old lady or is slower than one of its opponents. Larry's goal is opposite to the Wildeback, as he is trying to escape the game. Instead of moving forward with a black trail, Larry must escape by completing a red trail. Larry loses the game if he is trapped by the old lady or beaten by one of his opponents. The old lady is a bit more complicated, so I suggest trying her after you've played as one of the previous characters. Instead of building her own trail, she attacks other players by building curse trails. A curse trail is built over another player's trail, using the opposite color. To beat a single opponent, you have to finish the entire curse before they reach their goal. If you're facing both the Wildeback and Larry, you have to bind them both by completing half of a curse trail under each of their trails, like this. You lose the game if an opponent reaches their goal before you can stop them. And lastly is the Seeker. As the Seeker, your goal is to copy another player's goal. If you build a red or black trail before your opponent, you win. Because the Seeker doesn't have a specific goal, they can't be cursed by the old lady. Instead, they lose if they are beaten by an opponent or if the opponents are beaten by the old lady. Let's look at the actual structure of Trail Seeker. For larger tables or longer games, you may use two decks instead of one. To start the game, separate all of the face cards from the deck, then give them to each respective player based on the character. King for Wildeback, Queen for the Old Lady, Jack for Larry, and Joker cards for the Seeker. Have the players shuffle their sets and place them face down. Trail Seeker uses these face cards as power cards. Each of these characters have unique powers that can alter the game, which I will describe a bit later. Shuffle the rest of the cards to create a draw pile, and deal 6 cards to each player's hand. Pick whichever player goes first, by rolling dice, having a burping contest, or democratically electing. Then cycle the turns clockwise. At the start of a player's turn, they can choose to redraw up to their hand size. Then they can start their trail. To start a trail, you must have either a 10 or an ace of your character's color. Then, using any available cards from your hand, begin your journey from one end of the trail to the other. The direction you build in is based on your starting card. For example, a player starting with an ace has to put down a 2 next, but a player starting with a 10 must place a 9 next. When you've played as many cards as you can, draw up to your hand size and end your turn. Now that we've got the basics down, let's look at power cards. Each player should have their own stack of court cards face down beside their hand. At any point during your turn, you may draw one of your power cards, which activates that power. Each character has two variant powers, depending on which card you draw. For the Wildeback, if you draw and activate a red power card, choose an opponent. Then, choosing from their hand, you can convert one card from red to black. To indicate the change, place your power card under the selected card. For example, if Larry needs a red 5 to progress his trail, and has one in his hand, this power can be used to stop him from being able to use it on his next turn. If the Wildeback draws a black power card, you can instead use it to change your own red card to black from your hand. So if you have a red 3, but need a black 3 for your trail, you can convert it and play that card. Larry's powers are opposite to the Wildeback. Drawing a red power card allows him to change an opponent's black card to red, chosen from their hand. Drawing a black power card allows Larry to change one of his own black cards to red. The old lady's powers function to disrupt opponents by stealing cards. Drawing a red power card allows her to steal one card from an opponent's hand. Drawing a black power card allows her to steal the most recently played card from an opponent's trail. 
The Seeker's power functions to disrupt the entire flow of the game, in classic Joker fashion. Drawing a red power card allows the Seeker to trade one trail with an opponent. Note that this includes curse trails, and that this power can actually hinder the Seeker if they have a more successful trail. Drawing a black power card allows the Seeker to trade their entire hand with an opponent's hand. The last note regarding powers is a variant rule. You may choose to shuffle power cards into the deck once they've all been used. With this rule, any player who draws a power card can use it from their hand, even if it isn't their own. To do this, instead of placing powers behind the affected card, shift the card sideways to indicate the color change. Enjoy building trails, disrupting other players, and if you have any questions, I don't care. I'm kidding, I'll try to clear some stuff up in the comments if I missed anything. Hope that helps.